together on today. Even though you're in your cars, I want you to know you can still pat your hands. And if you want to stand outside your car and raise your hands and clap your hands, you are welcome to do so. But we want you to join in with the worship on today. Let's lift up our Savior. Amen? Amen.
Everything to me. You're everything to me.
some people hung up on being inside the building. But I want you to know that we are the church. We are the church. So wherever we are, we can praise our God. No matter what we're doing, we can praise our God. for a few moments on today and we're we're so grateful to have you all here on on this time you know it, some people don't even have a mind to go to worship some people don't even they, if it's not the way they expect it then they they don't want to be together with the saints but we're just so glad that you are here with us on today second timothy 1 8 through 12 reads therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our lord nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has called, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Father, we just come before you right now, Lord God. We, 
We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for allowing us to just come one more time into corporate worship. We thank you, Lord God, first of all, for you being God. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you, God, for blessing us on today to be able to get up and move about. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy that you've shown towards us. And God, we pray today that this, this message will not fall on deaf ears, Lord God, but it will do what you have sent it to do, Lord God. We know, God, that there's somebody that needs to hear this on today. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to just walk before you uprightly. Help us, oh God, to be an example to other people. Father, we thank you right now that this word, God, will find a seat in somebody's heart. And they will come and say, I want to change. I want to be saved. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do come now. We say amen. Amen. I just want to talk on the subject for a few moments. Don't be ashamed to serve God. Don't be ashamed to serve God. I want you to take a moment right here and reflect on who you were back in the day and how you acted before you got saved. If you're honest, you'd say that, you know, we did our own thing and we were proud of it. We loved the sin we were in and we were not ashamed of the way we carried ourselves. Truth be told, many of us celebrated our sinfulness. We made plans to sin. We, we loved what we were doing. And then there are some things in life that we have said or done that we are now ashamed of. It could be when you mistreated someone or you said something hurtful to or about someone and maybe it was how you reacted or how you acted in a certain situation and you think about how you could have handled things in a better way and you were ashamed of your behavior. But today I want to talk to you about something that you should never be ashamed of. Your faith in God. People may shun you and talk about you for your walk of faith. But I want to encourage you today to not allow their actions, their comments, or any other negative behavior cause you to be ashamed of serving the Lord. See, last week we were in 1 Timothy, and the Apostle Paul was encouraging Timothy, who had taken over as pastor of the church in Ephesus, and he was reassuring Timothy to stand firm in the faith in spite of what was going on around him. He reminded him of the fact that God is merciful, and he will strengthen him through whatever he faced. Well, in today, in our text for today, Paul is writing his second letter to Timothy, who is a little discouraged by the things that are going on around him. He, Paul seems to sense the fact that Timothy is growing weary and regretful of sharing the gospel because of the suffering and the persecution and the trials that come with when you serve in God. See, Paul wants Timothy to know that there are some things in life we must never be ashamed of. See, I want you to know that as believers, there is a tendency among us from time to time to be ashamed of who we are and what we have as Christians. There are times when we try to hide the fact that we are believers in Jesus Christ. See, there are some people who are ashamed to admit that they love the Lord. And there are some people who have allowed the opinions of others to cause them to conceal that they are trusting in God. And, and there, there are times when we fail to speak up in a discussion about doctrinal matters because of the truth in the Bible differs from what the people are saying. See, we've got to learn not to be ashamed of God. We need to not be ashamed to sell out completely to the Lord based on our fear of what man will say. See, there are some that are going to suffer. They're going to suffer shame over their failures of the past that haunt them and it prevents them from committing to the Lord. But I want to tell you today, don't be ashamed to identify yourself with the cross of Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed to, to have the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. You need to realize that it is the cross that purchased your salvation. It is the cross that stands as a dividing line between the saint and the sinner. And what we got to remember what happened on that day in Calvary. 
carefully. It makes the difference in whether we spend eternity in heaven or in hell. Don't be ashamed to identify yourself with the gospel message because sharing that message, it may bring persecution and it may bring suffering, but that message ultimately, it brings salvation to those who are lost. So if you are saved today, you serve as a living witness that that message of the cross, it penetrated your heart and it caused you to come to a decision to accept Jesus as Lord of your life. Paul warns Timothy to not be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of the people of God, including him who was in prison for the cause of Christ. We should never be ashamed to let people know that we serve a living God. Paul goes on and he reminds Timothy that we are saved. We have been delivered from the depths of sin and we're saved from the wrath of God and salvation, it delivers the soul. It changes the life and it alters the course and it defines our destiny and it perfects the saints. And see, we've got to realize salvation is a great gift. It is a, 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 a vast gift. It's so glorious and so big in what it offers that we have not even begun to comprehend all that we have in Jesus Christ. But he, Paul was also reminding Timothy that our salvation and our calling have nothing to do with who we are or anything to do with what we may have done. We are saved by grace and grace alone. As we talked about last week, that grace is the unmerited love and favor of God. And it was manifested towards us before the world was ever formed. So even though God knew all about us and about everything that we would do, he still extended his saving grace towards us. It was his grace that loved us. It was his grace that sought us. His grace, it called us. His grace, it saved us. His grace is keeping us. And his grace will one day lead us home. For what we have and who we are has nothing to do with it. But Paul then tells Timothy that it's the gospel that compels him to serve the Lord. It's the message of grace that motivates him to pour out his life for the glory of God. See, Paul reminds us that we don't choose what our gift in the kingdom is. He said he was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. God chose him to preach his word, to be one who gives the message of the king. He chose him he was sent out on orders on behalf of the king and he appointed him as a teacher so he can show men the way of salvation. See, God chooses you and he gives you a gift. He puts in you what you need to do for his kingdom. So don't be ashamed to stand up and tell people that you love the Lord. See, Paul, he closes his of what 
serving God. Don't be ashamed of serving God. You know, we, we want the blessings. We want the blessings. We want God to rain blessings in our lives. But we forget that there's some things we have to suffer through. Some things we got to go through. But in the end, God gets the glory out of it. And Jesus even, he said, whoever's ashamed of me and my words of him, the son of man, will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his father's and, the whole, and of the holy angels. So we need to not let anything or anyone cause us to be ashamed of serving God in spirit and in truth. You might suffer. People may put you down. But you got to remember that God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Worship team, come on up. I encourage everyone listening here to commit your life to the Lord and serve him for his glory. Don't allow people to make you shame to say that you love God. Don't allow people to shame you because you have a praise in your heart. You give God, God the glory no matter what. So at this time, we're going to give an opportunity for each and every person that is gathered here to search your own heart. Search your own heart. See where you stand with God. Have you been ashamed? Have you been ashamed to just say, yes, I love the Lord? Do you cower away when you're around people who don't believe? Or do you still let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven? Some of you don't realize you're the only Bible some people will ever look at. You have to live what that word says. And when these people see you, they will then want to know what is it about you? How is it that you can handle your tests the way that you do? How is it that you can smile when things are falling apart? And then you can tell them, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. If you're here today and you have yet to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, we want to offer you an opportunity to say yes to him. All you have to do is just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Will you tell him yes today? If there is a yes in your heart, I want you to speak this prayer with me. Lord, I come before you right now and I confess that I am a sinner and I need your grace. God, I believe that Jesus is Lord and I believe, Lord God, that you rose, you, he died and then you raised him from the dead for the remission of my sins. God, I receive your salvation today. Come into my heart. Change me, oh God. Make me what you would have me to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're sitting in your car today and you have something on your heart, we want to give you an opportunity to just lift your hands. You, you're welcome to stand outside if you'd like, but lift your hands unto the Lord. Uh, if you have a prayer need, uh, uh, something that you desire, we're going to agree together for God to move in that situation. There's some things I know that we as a nation need God to do. So if you don't mind, even if
if you don't have a specific prayer request, would you lift your hands with us? Would you lift your hands with us? Father, we just come before you right now, Lord God. We're calling on your holy name, Lord God. We've got our hands lifted up high to you, God, in reverence unto you. Father, we just ask you right now. God, you know the situations that each and every one of us are facing. And we know, God, that you are able to take care of it, Lord God. We just got through talking about how whatever we commit to you, you're going to keep it, Lord God. So we're asking you right now, Lord God, to take over the situation. Move in the places that people need you to move. God, we're asking you to do it all according to your will. Father, those who need healing in their bodies, we know that you are a healer. So we ask for healing right now. And we stand on your word, God, that says by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Oh, God, we know somebody needs a breakthrough on today. Somebody's looking for employment, God. We're asking you to open doors for them. Father, there's somebody who needs you to fix their broken heart right now, God. They're grieving over some situations, Father, and they need you to send comfort, Lord God. And we're calling on you to give them peace, Lord God. The peace that you said you could give them, Lord God. You said that your peace you give us, not as the world gives it. You would give us peace, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. So, God, we're asking you right now, if you would step in, Father. Oh, God, there's some things that need to be removed, God. We're asking you, Lord God. We know some things you use to, to get us to move in the right direction. But, God, we're asking you to bring us as a nation to a place of repentance, Lord God. Bring us to a place where we will truly walk in your word, Lord God, that we will love everything. Lord God, no matter what the skin is like, Lord God, no matter what their background is, Lord God, help us love one another, Lord, with the love that you gave us, Father. Help us, Lord God, because we don't want to miss you, God. We don't want to miss you, God. We don't want to fall short, Lord God. Help us, oh God. Come to that place, God. Help us to have the compassion that Jesus had for mankind. God, we love you. We praise you, Lord. We adore you, Father. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. So before we dismiss, the worship team is going to sing, and then we're going to, while they pass out, do y'all have the stuff? We got some items that will be passed out. So while they're getting that, we're gonna we're gonna sing a little bit of I, I 